Welcome. In this video we'll compare subject or concept searching with keyword searching and talk about the differences and the advantages and disadvantages of each technique. In previous videos we've discussed techniques for searching for information primarily in print secondary sources. The two techniques we discussed are the index method and the table of contents method. These are known collectively as subject or concept searching. When we move online and you begin searching for specific words as word, that is referred to as keyword searching. When it comes to keyword searching, there are also two different ways to search. One can use either a natural language search or one can search using terms and connectors. For purposes of this video, we will speak about keyword searching generally. Whether it is better to use a natural language search or a terms and connector search while trying to locate information within a secondary source is a subject we'll cover in future videos. One of the main points of this lesson is that there are advantages and disadvantages to searching within a secondary source using an index and searching within a secondary source using a keyword search. Some of the advantages of using keywords to search within a secondary source are obvious. First of all, you are used to keyword searches, so this is probably the most comfortable sort of search for you to run. Beyond that, keyword searching is much more flexible because you have the ability to combine terms or phrases and because you can establish criteria or search terms without regard to whether those terms appear as part of the publisher's controlled vocabulary or index terminology. When using a keyword search, one is free to establish one's own keywords. Therefore, a researcher can be very precise or look for very specific terms. This is an advantage when looking for something very narrow or factually specific. But there are disadvantages to keyword searching as well. First, a keyword search is only as good as a researcher's understanding of the terms of art in a given area of law. In other words, your keyword search may miss relevant documents or sections of a secondary source because you haven't chosen the right keywords or because you've missed important synonyms. Likewise, a keyword search may result in many false hits because the words can appear in other contexts and because words may be used in more than one way. Even with relevance ranking, keyword searches can often retrieve extraneous articles that use the search terms but do not focus on a particular subject. The main advantage of using an index is that the creator will have gone through and located the main points of discussion. So for example, the phrase intentional infliction of emotional stress may appear hundreds of times in a treatise on torts. However, there may only be a handful of places where it is discussed in any depth. When you look up the term in an index, you ought to be pointed to those. Another advantage is that an index will identify and recognize similar terminology and cross-reference you or direct you to a broader heading or an alternative term where a discussion might be found. So, for example, if you were looking about rivers or streams, you may be cross-referenced to a broader subject like natural waters. Similarly, extortion or bribery may be indexed under the broader term undue influence. The disadvantage of using an index is that there are a limited number of terms that are indexed terms or access points. If you don't know the exact controlled vocabulary term, you may get stuck. When using an index, it's helpful to think of synonymous terms and broader or narrower terms to match up against the index terms. So, for example, if I looked up intentional infliction of emotional distress in a keyword index for a treatise on torts, it might direct me to the broader index term emotional injuries, and from there I would be directed to the narrower term intent. As a quick example, when I execute a word search for intentional infliction of emotional distress in Dobbs Law of Torts, a treatise on Westlaw, I get 342 hits. As it turns out, result number 7 is where the primary discussion begins at section 385 and following. One thing you'll note here is that the search results point generally to sections in the high 380s. That's a good clue that you're in the right area, at least. When I searched the online index for intentional infliction of emotional distress, I was cross-referenced to the broader index term, emotional harm. If you remember from a previous video, when I searched the print index of modern tort law for intentional infliction of emotional distress, I was directed to the broader related term, emotional injury. Anyhow, when I went to that term and scrolled down, I was directed to section 48 and 385 to 389, which, again, is where the primary discussion occurs. One big takeaway from this discussion is this. If you choose to execute a keyword search, your keyword search will only be as effective as the relationship between the keyword and the underlying concept the keyword is trying to capture. Often students search using very specific facts, and they're very disappointed to find out that they get very poor results. 
Keep in mind when searching that it's often more effective to look for controlling concepts first and then to see if those concepts or rules have been applied in your particular factual situation. If you are using a keyword search to locate information within a secondary source and you're coming up empty, it's time to take a step back. Instead of searching for facts as they may relate to a concept with an illegal subject, try a different approach. Namely, start with the subject first. Either look for terms in an index or go to the table of contents and try to find particular chapters or sections that seem most pertinent and drill down from there. To give you an example, I once had a student who came to the reference desk and was having a hard time finding cases discussing whether or not a state's attorney could introduce evidence of a civil settlement in a criminal case. The basic facts were that a witness who was prepared to testify against the defendant in a criminal action had a civil suit pending against that defendant. The witness and the defendant settled the civil suit and suddenly the witness had a faulty memory at trial. The state's attorney wanted to introduce the settlement as evidence. The student was having a hard time executing a keyword search to locate cases because the terms witness, civil, criminal, testimony, etc. did not relate to the underlying concept. I took the student to a treatise on evidence which had a chapter on examination of witnesses and a subchapter on examining for bias, motive, or influence. There, the student found many examples of cases with analogous factual scenarios. The lesson here is that many times, but not always, subject searching within secondary sources is superior to, or at least a strong alternative to, keyword searching. That's it for this lesson. In the next video, we'll look at searching for law review articles using Hein Online and LegalTrack. See you then.